In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own private cloud. So you can set up a email server, a NetCloud instance for file storage, and a password manager so you can keep track of all your passwords for it. So if you just came here for a quick tutorial, you want to understand like how to do this, uh, it's pretty simple. You just go to my GitHub, the link will be down below, and you run these scripts. So I have a script for setting up a mail server, I have a script for setting up the NextCloud, and one for setting up a portfolio or a website. Uh, before I discuss how you can do this, um, it's probably better to explain why you want to do it in the first place. So people are becoming more and more reliant on services like Google, Gmail, uh, Dropbox, Google Drive, all these services. So on top of becoming more dependent on them, these companies have a horrible track record for keeping track of your data and for privacy reasons. And also having your own virtual private server, it just means that you know exactly where your data is, you can control it completely, and you can customize it to any way you want. So there's a lot of benefits to actually becoming more dependent. To explain the services a bit more, um, Nextcloud is essentially just a file storage service. Um, it's similar to Google Drive or Dropbox. Uh, it ha uses PHP on the front end, so like it has a stylish kind of you know, user interface and you just like upload files the same way you would with anything else. For the email service itself, I'm just using Postfix and Dovecot in order to control the email being sent and being able to receive emails. Um, I'm using Spam Assassin to get rid of spam, uh, OpenDKIM to, so you can be able to send emails to Gmail and Yahoo and other services. I'm also using MySQL in the back end so you can store all your domains and aliases. This actually has a lot of benefits over using just a regular email service because you can have, say, various aliases. So social, uh, domain, whatever your domain is, spelled wrong, of course. Uh, you can have, I don't know, just temp, uh, your domain, whatever. Um, basically, you can create various aliases and you can give these to services that you don't want to give your email out to. And that way, you could still filter all these aliases into your email address. But you don't have to, like, you can always just delete it. You can direct that mail somewhere else. I, for example, have it forwarded to um, a primary email that I normally use and I delete whenever it gets a bit too full or I just don't want to get any notifications of social media anymore. But anyway, so the first thing you're going to want to do before you, sorry. The first thing you're going to want to do before you do any of this is you're going to want to set up a virtual private server unless you're hosting a server by yourself. I, you mean you could essentially if you have like an old Raspberry Pi or an old computer and you have enough bandwidth in your house, you can easily just set up your own server. But uh, what I did was I got a virtual private server. The one that I use is from Hostwinds. Um, it's relatively cheap. It's like five euro or something a month. So it's relatively cheap. I have like a one gigabyte of memory, I think, uh, 30 gigabytes of space. I'm not too sure. But anyway, uh, so yeah, you get a virtual private server. Um, once you've done that, uh, I've created automation scripts in the GitHub down below. And essentially what these do is they just run all of the commands and everything that you would normally need to do for configuring these services. So in the mail service, for example, uh, you give it some parameters, in this case, like email, password, the user, which is just, you know, whatever your user is that you want uh, to have as your primary uh, email address. Uh, for me, I just completely ignore that. Um, it sets up some aliases, so I, by default, have created social, purchasing, and private. So, you know, private if you want to give to, uh, sorry, not private. Purchasing is like, you know, if you want to buy stuff online. Uh, professional is if, like, say, I don't know, you want to give it to a company you're applying for or something, LinkedIn maybe. Uh, and then they just, like, filter all to your primary email address, which is just your username at whatever your domain is. Uh, FQDN in this case is just your mail domain. So normally this is just, you know, mail.domain.com. 
or whatever your domain is. Uh, to get a domain, I just use GoDaddy, uh, you know, anywhere you can get a cheap domain. I'm pretty sure you can actually get ones for free. I mean, I don't know, free domain, maybe. I don't know, maybe that exists. I don't know, I haven't really looked into it. Like, I think you can get free XYD domains or something. But anyway, yeah, so essentially, this just runs all the commands that you need to. Um, I've tested this only on Ubuntu 18, I believe. What fucking... I don't know. Whatever. Uh, it's either... Uh, it works on Ubuntu 18 and 20, I believe. So I don't know if this is going to work on Debian, but whatever virtual server you're running, uh, you should probably make sure that it's Ubuntu or Debian. So, I mean, who wants to like, configure an Arch or a Windows server? Like, God. But anyway. So I've downloaded these... Uh, with GitHub, and yeah, so you just run it, sorry, you have to run this as sudo, install mail server, so email, just, I don't know, Owen, uh, whatever, this is going to be the email that it forwards it onto, so what I've set up is I have an external email address that I like to forward mail onto, uh, in this case it's a Proton mail address, um, what about domain? So mine's just on kugan.com. FQDN is just mail at whatever your domain is. In this case, on kugan.com. Uh, what am I other? Oh, yeah, password. You're going to want to give it a secure password. This is going to be. Oh, my God, I can't spell today. But anyway. Yeah, so you're going to want to give it a secure password, your user. Um, you're best to just use whatever user that you've created on your virtual private server. Um, if you want to create a separate user for this, fine. But in this case, I'm just going to be Kugi. And yeah, that's it. You just run that. For God's sake. And yeah, I'm not going to run this again because it's already set up. But uh, yeah, when that does set up, uh, you're going to, I nearly forgot, you're going to want to set up your uh, domains. Uh, so when you create a domain name, in this case, ownkugan.com is my, my name, .com, um, you're going to want to set up the MX, which is just the uh, mail domain. You're going to want to set up a um, domain for any of your other uh, services you're in. So in my case, I have one that's nextcloud.ownkugan.com and I just pointed this to my uh, my address of the IP of uh, my virtual private server. Um, and I also have another script here, which is set up website and what this does is this is really good if you want to set up like your own portfolio or your own like like personal website it's really handy it just creates uh, an apache server uh, sends it to you know whatever creates a very basic html file creates a certificate for you with a cert bot but anyway yeah once you've done the next cloud, um, you'll get this essentially. So you're going to want to put in whatever your username was and your password. And yeah, in the log files, this has been changed. So it's instead of being put to whatever this directory is, it's like next cloud or something. It's just in the root directory. So, you know, you can't actually access it from the main because like that can cure some security issues. But yeah, you're going to want to, I'm not going to go into it, obviously I'm not going to show you my details, but um, yeah, once that's set up, you know, you're good to go. So yeah, what I'm hosting on my virtual private server is I'm hosting my email address and you can contact me at contact at uh, my next cloud instance and my own personal website, so ownkugan.com. Uh, another really good service to use, which I'll show you. Now is I use KeyPass as a password manager. So what I was planning on doing originally was using Bitwarden as a password manager and hosting it on this cloud as well. But to be honest, uh, it's not really necessary. What KeyPass is, is essentially, it's just a file that you have on your computer. So in this case, I have it down here. 
And what this is, is you give it a master password. Uh, I'm not going to type it in. But what you do is it creates various different passwords for all of your services. So you can have one for Facebook, one for YouTube, one for, uh, well, in this case, I have one for my Nextcloud instance. So my Nextcloud My Nextcloud password for my account, I don't know what it is. Like, I don't need to know what it is. It's like some fucking 64-bit alphanumerical with symbols inside of it, um, which you generate automatically using KeePass. Uh, if you want to, say, you know, I don't know, put this on another device or something, you can just take this and, like, you know, copy it to anything. Like, you can copy it onto your Nextcloud instances, which is what I do. Uh, you can copy it onto your phone or whatever you want to use, like, your accounts from. It's just a really simple way of keeping track of your password, and it's completely free. So, yeah, these are the main services that I wanted to set up in my virtual private server. Uh, there's probably a few more that I'm going to add in the future. Like, again, I was talking about doing Bitwarden. I'm probably not going to do it. Um, so I do a lot of development. So what I wanted to do was create a kind of a CI CD pipeline for software development um, and set up, you know, the Ansible service and Jenkins and everything for automating that. Um, you know, that might not be interesting to a lot of people, but it is for me. Simple login. Um uh, Simple Login is an interesting service that I've heard about from, I think it was TechLore's channel. Um, but to be honest, I'm essentially doing the exact same thing as Simple Login does just with my own email server. So I've created aliases, which I'll show you, for example. So, so essentially what I have is I have a MySQL a table that has virtual aliases in it and no i'm not going to show you what the aliases are but essentially it just maps an alias like social at owencoogan.com and what it does is it maps this to my normal email address i'm not going to say it. it's coogie uh, i mean i've already kind of explained that but so what it does is it maps it to my private email. So say if this gets a bit too cluttered, like, you know, I don't really want any, you know, emails from Twitter or Facebook. I can just fucking delete this thing and like, I don't know, create a new one, like temp at owencuban.com. And yeah, I can just like direct new services to this. And instead of having to, like, you know, delete and reinstall like new email addresses, you're going to want to like compartmentalize your email addresses anyway. Like, you know, don't, give every single service you use your same email address because well i mean first off they don't need that you shouldn't be giving it out in the first place but also like it gets cluttered and everything like that and you can just like delete it and get rid of it easily and that's essentially what simple login does it like makes that very simple but i feel like you know this is simple enough like i'm already kind of doing this with my email service anyway but yeah that's just another cool like little service i was thinking about doing uh like i might add some more in the future oh yeah so like nextcloud uh one thing i did want to mention is like you can create a calendar and a few other services on that like an app and um, so you can have like almost like a similar to like a google environment where like you have like all these services kind of like connected and you know if people give you an event you know looking like be connected to your next cloud instance so it is really really handy having next cloud instance like that but yeah like i mean i created these scripts so like i don't have to like redo it every time like you know something shits to bed and i have to like try to figure out what's going on uh some of them especially like the mail server itself uh, there might be some issues like there might be some extra things you need to configure but this is the gist of it uh, if you do have any issues with it please let me know like i'm sure there's probably going to be some errors that pop up every now and then when i make changes so don't be afraid to let me know in the github account or on this video but yeah so essentially don't be as reliant on services like Google and, you know, Microsoft and everything like that. You know, it's good to be able to host your own services. You know, you know where your data is. You know exactly what you can and can't do with it. Like, you know, you can edit it and like, configure it in multiple different ways that you can't do it with, like, say, Gmail or, like, Google Drive or whatever. And, you know, it's always just good to be able to learn, like, new things and be able to, you know, experience this and just be able to, like, keep control and get more independent of all these fucking services that people are giving all their data to and, like, are stealing your 
data and like selling it to various ad companies and everything like that. So yeah, that's how you can set up your own uh, virtual cloud. Uh, if you do have any questions, please let me know. Uh, hopefully I want to add some more services to this in the future. So stay tuned if you're interested. And until then, I'll see you next time.